Hello everyone and welcome back to our WebAssembly tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at a bit of a different topic from memory. Uh, we're going to be looking at some exported functions. So when I say export, I mean exporting from JavaScript to WebAssembly. So we essentially want to be able to use or call a function that originates in JavaScript from WebAssembly. We've gone over how to use WebAssembly functions in JavaScript, and we did that with C call, C wrap, and then streaming. And now we're going to go the other way around. We have had a bit of exposure to this, however, and I will show you that right here. So when we did malloc, we had to, we got a couple of errors because this function wasn't defined. This mscript and resize heap function wasn't defined. And the reason why I was looking for it was, well, if you go into the watt, uh, val the watt conversion of the wasm file, it's trying to import an mscript and resize heap function. Hence, we had to export from JavaScript in the environment object this definition of a function, which just became memory.grow. So we're going to dive a little deeper into how this works, and we will leverage some of the abilities of it beyond just allocating more memory. So I'm going to create a, a C function export or a C file exported.c. We're going to include mscript and .h, include m, um, standard lib.h, and then we will have our main function. And then we will have our function that, uh, let's say for this purpose, we want to generate a random string. So mscript and resi, or sorry, keep alive. And remember, these examples are quite basic, but you, they are here just to demonstrate what WebAssembly can do. So it'll return, return an unsigned character pointer random string, and we'll pass in a length for the string. We will allocate to string, so unsigned character pointer string is equal to malloc length plus one, and this is just going to be a, a standard random string generator. So we will use uh, random numbers in C. So we'll start by seeding the random value with time null. So this just seeds it with the current time. Then we want to go and through a counter. So integer i is equal to zero. i is less than length, i plus plus. And then string at i is equal to the random, a random value, modulo. Now we're going to generate a random character between 33 and 126 in the Unicode value or in the, the UTF-8. Uh, encoding but these are just essentially the printable characters and not sure if there's gonna be a table here um, but eh, it's kind of so we essentially just want to go from here all the way up to this character so or rather all of these values here we want to generate a printable character let's write that there and we're going to generate that between 126 and 33. So the range of this random value will be 127 minus 33. And then we add the minimum. So this is just generating a random number uh, in, in a range of 33 to 126. And then we will say string at length is equal to zero for the terminator and the return string. So this is all good and wonderful. Now let's say that this wasn't just a random string generator. And let's say it was a, a data processor and we were doing, a, we had a, a large for loop and we wanted to keep track of the progress of what was happening. So we might want a log function. However, what good this log function, we don't necessarily want to call it from JavaScript because JavaScript isn't the one emitting the events. We want to emit the events every time we generate a new character. Now these events are going to generate on the WebAssembly side. So we essentially want to create a callback or pass in a callback for JavaScript to receive a call and then show the progress on whatever, however they want to. Now, that, that, that's, that's something that we could definitely do. Well, we've been doing that with malloc. Like I said, malloc is, is just an exported function from JavaScript. And it provides a callback. So whenever in our code we call malloc, it's just going to call this imported callback that we give it. So it's going to call this value, this function that we give it. 
So we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to have a void function log and we will pass in the progress. So integer progress, or, you know, I'll actually say double progress progress. So this will just be like the zero to one. So the, the percent or the, the proportion done. And we will say once we generate log with, I'm going to pass in a double I divided by double length. I should say rather, uh, this should be I plus one to get a true percentage there. And that's what we have here. And I'm, it's not liking, doesn't, doesn't like this. So I, so if we did try to compile this, let's just go ahead and, and try it. Um, so I have uh, EM SDK activated. So you can just run the command EM SDK activate. And I'm going to say EMCC, it's exported.c o exported.js. And it's going to, uh, it's, 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 it's going to not like this at all. Well, the reason why is because this log function is not, is not declared. So this is actually, I, I suppose this isn't compatible. So we need to rename this function as log progress. It's also looking for time, which is not uh, something that we want. Um, but I did this and it's, it's okay now, but if we look in our wasm to what, so if I take the, it's not even generating it well because of the time stuff. Um, let me just say, we'll see it with a random zero. We don't need to worry about the time right now. Um, actually, I suppose we, we could just get the time and also export that. So current time. So void, or this will be, uh, I think seed random takes in a, an integer. So an unsigned integer time, current time takes in no values. And let me try and compile this now. And well, it doesn't like it. A couple of reasons why. Current time may need to be added to exported functions. Log progress may need to be added to exported functions. These are all errors and we actually did get a file here. So let's, let's just take a look at the file. It's looking for several imports now. So as opposed to just M script and resize heap, I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, it's looking for now cur time and log progress, which is kind of what, kind of what we're looking for. This is, this is the type of behavior that we want. Now to avoid the errors, we just need to define these as extern functions like so. And these functions will just be defined and uh, we will assume to have, to have them at runtime. And when I compile this now, we see that it is still not liking this at all. I guess there isn't a workaround to, because it's still generating this properly. You know, let's just try and go ahead with it. So even though we have the errors, even though this is extern, it's not liking it, but that's okay. So we'll go and create our HTML. File. So exported html i'm just going to copy from malloc.html and uh, we will just do a couple of things here so we'll have a input for length we have a couple of decode functions here that we programmed last time and i'll just keep those around for now and i'll delete the ones that we don't need now i want to change get string and we will need to change the streaming so right now we have the memory set up properly we have instantiate streaming, this time calling fetch on exported.wasm. We have JS, which sets the memory variable, and then ENV, which gives us the environment, uh, ex the ability to export a function. And we exported memory.grow for malloc. And if you look, the definition to import these other functions, current time and log progress, are the exact same. So, we're just going to do the same thing in the environment object. So we need a current time, which is undefined for now. And I will, uh, and we will, we will define that, but the log, the log is more important. So I'm just going to, for current time, I'll just say, uh, this will just generate to a hundred like so. 
then we will also have log progress. And this function I want to have as just a, a different function here. So function log progress takes in a double proportion. And sorry, this there's no types in JavaScript, that's a mistake. But log progress will just go to log progress, like so, and put a comma. So we now have our functions being exported to WebAssembly. So log progress, we now just, let's say we'll, we will just console.log proportion times 100 for now. And that'll be good. Now the other thing we have to change is get string. Um, we will decode this string. Uh, this time exports.getString is going to become exports.randomString, this function here. And we will pass in a number, which we'll say 40 for now. All right, so we have our HTML set up. Let me just zoom out so I can show you guys one more time. Um, we have memory. Streaming is set up as normal, except this time we have the two extra environment imports here, or the environment exports to WebAssembly. And then log progress is this callback. And then function get string is this thing here. So we get our string and log it and then also write the text. And I suppose we will also just say ret dot, um, sorry, not ret, document dot query selector, hashtag ret dot inner HTML plus equals just pass in the string at a break in the line. So if we go to our browser and look at our static file server, exported function, exported.html, and go to our console, no errors, which is good, meaning it, that all the imports were filed properly. I'm gonna copy the string and lots of, lots of different things here. So this is our generated string from WebAssembly. And you see that we have all of these values that are just, what, how, what, how are we gonna make sense of this? Well, if you see, these are coming from exported.html35. What's at line 35? Console.log proportion times 100. So the function is getting called 40 times, once for every character that we have. So log progress is, this is our callback to the HTML file. And I guess what we can do is, let, let, let's try and create a progress bar. So uh, we'll have, hmm, let's create a span up top. Uh, we'll create a span over here. Span um, ID is equal to progress. And it's just like that for now. And we'll have a style and hashtag progress. We will say, is that how you do? I forget how to do CSS. Do not use that. Okay, no, it's, yeah, that's all good. Um, so height we will say is 30 px and then width is 0 px. So what we want to do now is in log log progress we want to l l let's control the width so it kind of expands. Um, so we'll say document dot query selector. Actually, instead of using query selector, we're going to say get element by ID. And this will be progress dot style dot width is equal to, and we're gonna create a string here. We're gonna construct a string proportion times 200. So we'll make the maximum width 200 and then PX. So to maximum 200 pixels. All right, so let's go ahead and reload. And we're gonna copy the string. And a couple of things happened, except we don't have a span anywhere but you see the width went up to 200 px which is what we want however i don't know if span oh it shouldn't be span it should be um div and i want to make the display block like so 
So I'm going to copy the string. Um, we're still getting this. Oh, because there's no background color. That's why. Background color, we'll say, is navy blue. Navy. All right, good. So just like that. Um, and you know what, let's try and make it a little bit slower. In our log progress function, we will actually tell JavaScript to wait a second. Um, so we can say cons, or we will um, use the, f the function set timeout. And this handler will just be an empty handler, so undefined. And the timeout is 1000. So we'll wait 1000 seconds or sorry, 1000 milliseconds, so one second, every time we get this callback. And if things go accordingly, it should increment in width every one second, or, you know, let's say 500 milliseconds, so every half second. So if we go back to our program here in the browser, I'm gonna copy our string, still doesn't like it. All right, so this undefined callback is not working, so let us actually try and do this here. So we will put the width incrementer, to, we will set it to wait after 500 milliseconds. So I'm going to run, copy a string. Okay, so it, you saw that it waited a second. Point is um, that this callback will happen. It's not just an instantaneous thing unless you're running a very basic loop. So what we can also do is just to kind of slow down the progress in in C is um, we can just run a very long loop. So integer j is equal to zero. j is less than um, 100,000, we'll say j plus plus. We can run the, it, compile it again. We're still just getting the link errors, which is okay. Um, but I'm gonna reload, copy the string. It's still going through it rather quickly. The WebAssembly is very quick. Um, let me make it say 10 million or say 100 million. See how long this takes. Let me just make sure that it's actually recreating our exported the WASM file. Yep, okay. So copy the string. You see that it's actually taking a bit longer here. Um, to print out our values, but it is not, hmm, it's not updating the length until the very end, which is interesting, but it did take a while to actually print out all these values. So you can imagine that if we have a very slow function or a very time consuming event that we can just log the progress as we go along. So let me check on this. So get element. Um, I mean, maybe I just need to make this an integer. So we will use the floor function to actually just convert this to an integer. And um, we can do that using the straight bar. I just figured this out. So that with zero, um, and this should convert it to an integer so that we can actually read it, but um, I'm not sure why it's it, was, it wouldn't accept the doubles because it has before. Um, so I'll reload this, copy the string, hmm. I don't like that at all, because I want to create this progress bar. Um, again, it's going slowly, which is fine and what we want. Is it because it's trying to find this as an integer? And log progress should be a double. Should we make it a float maybe? Maybe that'll change things. Because floats are four bytes and it might be complaining that the double's in eight bytes. Long progress. So we'll reload, copy the string. No, it still doesn't like, so it's less precision as expected with the floats. Okay, I, I think the problem is it is expecting and it's reading this as an integer. So, all right, so if we take a look over here we will see that type T4 is what we're actually taking in with log progress. Oh, actually, never mind. T4 is not the the parameter type. That's log progress 
that's mapping here. So type P4 is a function that takes in a parameter of float 64, which is what we wanted actually. So this is, I this is this seems to be a JavaScript error because this is actually getting passed in as a double, and we are exporting it as a double, um, which is what exactly what we want. Actually, yeah, this is a, I I should have picked up on this. This is a JavaScript error because proportion is still getting incremented, non not as an integer. It's updating it, but I okay. You know, I think it might the problem might be that. CSS is not getting updated until this JavaScript command of random string is completed. That seems to be it because JavaScript is single is single thread and it's waiting for this call to complete. Hence, it's not actually updating this, but it's interesting and weird at the same time that it's still able to console log. Let's try Let's try printing out the progress on the query on the return element. So here, and we'll just print out the proportion like so. If I run copy string, okay. So it's not able to, it's able to receive an element, but it's okay. That, that looks more like it, but it's not able to update any DOM content until the call is finished. That, that sounds right. Okay, so it is not actually our problem. However, we can say we can create an alert maybe. I, I'm, so we can alert with proportion, like so. I'm gonna copy a string and yes, so this keeps happening. Oh, okay, so this is, this is good because we can alert on progress and that will actually stop JavaScript. And you can see that it's incrementing the bar because there's some interrupt. But, so this is the way that we can see the progress happening if we create an interrupt in JavaScript with the alert function. So this is okay, this is good. So I'm just gonna keep going all the way. All right. So, it seems that we have discovered that this works. That's the point. There are just, we are limited by JavaScript as per usual, hence why WebAssembly was created. But that is exported functions. You can, I can hope you that you can imagine all of the possibilities that we can do with this. So if we're able to log progress, we're able to show the user, if we can figure it out somehow that maybe I, I hope that there will be a way to actually have this output and have this change be reflected in real time. Um, but whenever we log this progress, we're calling a JavaScript function. Whenever we call malloc, we are calling a JavaScript function. Whenever we're doing current time, we're calling a JavaScript function. And that is very cool. So we will be using this in later applications again, probably for logging and a couple other things, a lot of things, but I hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed play around with this a lot in the next video. We will probably end up doing a longer a live stream. Uh, we'll be looking at structure encoding and decoding and how to actually pass around complex objects that ex expand just beyond primitives. So if we wanted to return a structure or pass in a structure to WebAssembly, we're going to have to figure out how to do that. But I digress. That will be another video. Um, I will see you guys then. Have a good one.